In the eastern part of southeastern Europe, 400 kilometers from Constantinople, 1,000 kilometers from Athens, and about 600 kilometers as the crow flies from legendary ancient Troy, lies another elder city, which was described by Homer in the Iliad, a city whose history dates back more than 8,000 years. A city which, throughout its different names and incarnations, has witnessed history. Today, it is called Stara Zagora. Stara Zagora, the witness of history. Stara Zagora is the fifth largest city in Bulgaria. It is located in the Thrace region, south of the mountain range for which the Balkan Peninsula is named. The mountains were called the Balkan Hemis in antiquity, and now the Balkan Mountains. Over the millennia, this city was known by eight different names. Beroi, Augusta Triana, Verea, Irinopolis, Borui, Eskizara, Jeleznik, and Stara Zagora. The present name has been carried since the year 1871 one year after the Bulgarian church finally restored its independence from the Patriarchy of Constantinople, and seven years before the liberation of Bulgaria from Ottoman rule. Stara Zagora is the largest city in the northern part of the northern Thracian Valley, and today is poetically called the City of the Lindens. The first evidence of human activity in the area dates back more than 8,000 years. In the northwestern part of the modern city is located a mound, in which, in 1969, have been found the earliest archaeological artifacts from the time which scientists refer to as the beginning of the 6th millennium BC. During this period, on the European continent, we have still not found any evidence of famous ancient civilizations. The appearance of the first classical civilization would be the Sumerian civilization, which would take another 2,000 years. The settlement could have been inhabited for thousands of years. The last historical layers show that people inhabited the area until the beginning of the Early Bronze Age, the 3rd millennium BC. During the excavations in 1969, the remains of a building was found, in which probably lived three families. Until recently, it was thought that the people of the era were socially primitive. It turns out that this is not the case. The residences, the prehistoric mound in Stara Zagora, were not just any simple lodges. The houses were solidly built with a wood frame of massive poles with a diameter of 18 to 20 centimeters driven into the ground, woven wooden walls, plastered on both sides with clay mixed with straw three authentic furnaces which were used for heating of the house and cooking were preserved. There are also hand mills that prehistoric people used for the grinding of grain. In the house were discovered more than 60 ceramic vessels that have stood on the shelves on the walls and broke due to burning. Along the western walls were found granaries and samples of charred grain proves that the houses were burnt down in the early 6th millennium BC. Amongst the finds there are stone sharpeners, bone awls, needles, a ceramic altar, and other items. It's amazing the precision with which the ancients were able to carve images in clay. One of the figures is a masterpiece of the prehistoric collection of Star Zagora Museum. The Neolithic dwellings in Stara Zagora are exceptional in that they are the best preserved and had the most extensive inventory in all of Europe. This shows that our predecessors were not devoid of wit and creative ingenuity. This is not suggested by only the religious figurines and other similar objects which were found. In the fireplaces were found a number of clay balls with a double conical form that depict patterns of ceramic grains and are associated with the rituals of other indigenous farmers which inhabited Bulgarian lands. 
In the summer of 2012, archaeologists in Starzagora made a surprising discovery. Previously known to science, Neolithic dwellings and two-bedroom ground houses actually proved to be a two-story early Neolithic building. This architecture was a big step forward in showing us the type of lifestyle that people from this epoch enjoyed and a great insight into their unique culture. It turns out that they were very attuned to the world around them. Besides being involved in it, they had analyzed it and adapted accordingly. Another amazing achievement of the people of antiquity was discovered near Star Zagora in the form of well-developed copper mines. Experts say that the mines were operated more than 7,000 years. Calculations show that the mines in the bear shaft produced about 1,000 tons of copper over the course of its utilization. This is a huge amount of primitive technology mining and metal casting from that era. Prehistoric people used metal for making household implements, as well as making jewelry and other items. And here comes another surprise. Chemical analysis and findings from archaeological digs from different parts of Europe have found that the metal is derived precisely from the mines near Stara Zagora. Imagine. These mines were something like European multinational companies. They produced the copper on order and remained as a witness to history across the old continent from that era. Copper from Stara Zagora has been established. Artifacts were found in the necropolis near Varna, where was discovered the oldest processed gold in the world, including nearby prehistoric settlements and along the Volga River. This fact tells us that the ancient people not only traveled huge distances, but have traded successfully in remote villages and returned to travel again. It may be, though, still too early to talk about globalization. After the time of the prehistoric peoples, these places were inhabited by Thracians. If between them there is some connection, whether the prehistoric peoples helped to develop their skills and laid the foundations of the Thracian civilization, we do not know. It makes logical sense, but we have no hard evidence of that. Ancient Thracians were a people of high culture. Of their customs and skills, we know there are many based upon the various archaeological finds from the area of Star Zagora. According to one hypothesis, the Thracians founded there a settlement, which was called Beroi. Near Boroi was located the capital of the Erdrisian kingdom, Septopolis. At the beginning of the 4th century BC, the region was conquered by the Macedonian armies of Philip II, the father of Alexander the Great. But the Thracian culture continued to develop for centuries after this in a brilliant example, and we know this from the many and well-preserved archaeological monuments from that time period. Exquisitely decorated cartwheels, weapons, gold vases, decorations, and collections of delicate and fine glassware. In the first century AD, the Romans came to these lands. During the reign of the Emperor Trajan, in the early second century, near the area of the Thracian settlements, was founded a new Roman city that made history with the name Augusta Triana. History says that the emperor settled here with the veterans of his eastern legions. On the one hand, they supported the completion of the city, and on the other were left as a strategic reserve to protect the northern border of the empire. This hypothesis has many supporters, and due to its strategic position, Augusta Triana would have needed to have been well guarded. Augusta Triana is laid out with all of the architectural and city planning rules of a typical Roman city. There is a gymnasium, baths, a forum, two main streets, the Decumanus Maximus and the Cardo Maximus, dividing the city respectively into north and south and east and west halves. But here, we encounter a strange exception. As a rule, the forum in Roman cities was always in the center. In Augusta Triana, it was built near to the west gate. 
Why this was so, there is no record of explanation. Another unique landmark is recorded here. The floor of the Roman baths is covered with the largest ever found in the region land mosaic in such a building. For a short time, Augusta Triana established itself as a leading commercial and administrative center of the Roman province of Thrace. It even won the right to mint its own bronze coins. Its residents enjoyed a comfortable life, the rich living in the vicinity, living in luxurious villas such as those found around Rome. One of them, the Chautauqua Villa, provided us with priceless artifacts, a parade quality bronze helmet, and a Samaritan sword. While the mask may look like a work of art, the sword has given us very important information of the era. The Samaritans were a group of Iranian-speaking tribes which lived in the 4th century AD on the northern coast of the Black Sea. This decorated sword contains a jade plaque depicting a dragon. According to specialists, these embellishments are definitely of Chinese origin, and the sword belonged to the famous Samaritan king, Enismi. But how it turned up in the land of the Thracians is still a mystery. Today, a part of the old Cardo Maximus has been transplanted into the Stara Zagora Historical Museum. Built in the shape of an hourglass, in the basement, a visitor can walk down an authentic Roman street. And if you want, one can even wear costumes from that era. Fifteen kilometers northwest of Augusta Triana were located the mineral baths. Today, Stara Zagora is a resort town. Perhaps because of these magical springs, emperors opted for this to be the place to settle their veterans. After 20 years in combat, which was the standard term of service for a Roman soldier, they needed treatment. And these mineral baths offered excellent opportunities for recreation and restoration. That's why the Romans built their public thermal baths. The area is about 2,500 square meters and includes three swimming pools, two dressing rooms, hallways, and the sanctuary of the nymph, the goddess of water. The walls and floors of the pools were lined with polished marble. The floors of some rooms are covered with beautiful mosaics still preserved even today. There were previously uncovered and researched over 20 mosaics adorning various public and private buildings from the third through the 6th centuries. Some of them are unique in composition and symbols from the Balkan Peninsula and the eastern provinces of the Roman Empire. Among them are mosaics with the emblem of deer, the mosaics in the Postal Palace and the suburban villa such as the mosaic of the Dionysian procession. It turns out that in Augusta Triana, the Baroi inhabitants had an actively working and large school for mosaicers. Mosaics were very expensive decorations and not available to the poor. Obviously, in the first half of the 4th century, the city prospered. The economic opportunities available to the urban dwellers allowed luxurious and expensive mosaics and wall decorations. Their intertwined influences of both of the most famous schools of the eastern provinces and the capital of Constantinople and the famous shops of Rome, Aquileia, Ravenna, Spain, North Africa, and the Greek islands. After the decline of Rome at the beginning of the 5th century, the empire was already split into two, the Eastern and Western Roman empires. In the history of the Eastern Empire, it is written that the name stayed Byzantium. During this time, the area within the borders and limits of the city was named Baroi. In the early 8th century AD, the entire area of Zagore was granted by the Byzantine Emperor Justinian II the Noseless to the Bulgarian Khan Tervel. The reason is, is that the Khan helped the Emperor to regain the throne in Constantinople. Several years later, this same Khan Tervel will again come to the aid of Byzantium and shatter the invasion of the Arabs. Thus, in the year 711, Tervel saved Europe from the Arab invasion. Zagore was the payment for the safety of Europe's future. But it again became a Byzantine province only 50 years later. 
The mother of Emperor Constantine VI, Empress Irene, restored the city and the emperor liked it so much that he christened it with her name, Irenopolis. Later, the city became famous and was known by the names Varaya and Borui. In the Middle Ages, it was ruled with varying degrees of success and duration by both the Byzantine and the Bulgarian rulers. For two centuries, it was the temporary residence of the emperors of the dynasty Komnenos. From this period are the famous stone reliefs with images of animals, including that of a lioness with her cub, which was adopted as the modern symbol of Stara Zagora. After the fall of Bulgaria under Ottoman rule, the city's importance fell. The last Russo-Turkish War of 1877-78 was called the Liberation of the Bulgarian People. In the center of Stara Zagora, a single public building survived the burning of the town during the Russo-Turkish War. This conflict resulted in a unique mix of religions. The place is sacred due to its rare religious continuity. Excavations here are an ancient cult pit from the 1st century BC, the end of the Iron Age. Nearby are the remains of a pagan temple dedicated to the Thracian horsemen, circa the 2nd to 3rd century BC, one of the most revered deities of the Thracian pantheon, Heros. The temple itself was built in 1409 on the foundations of a medieval Christian cemetery church that existed from the 10th to the 13th century. The interesting thing about it is that it was built in violation of tradition. By canon, a wall called Quibla must be facing Mecca, but this is not so. The Quibla of the temple is a deviation from this requirement, which proves that its foundations are consistent with those of the existing Christian church. Interesting frescoes are in abundance. Elsewhere in these temples are decorative ornaments with floral and geometric motifs that serve to decorate the interior. Islam forbids the depiction of animals and human beings at all in secular painting. It is amazing, however, that during the restoration of the frescoes of the dome ornaments, the artisans found thumbnail paintings of animals, portraits, and landscapes, but very tiny, invisible to the naked eye from the ground. Probably, the artist which painted the murals in the 18th to 19th century was a free artist or Christian. The architectural complex, Museum of Religions, is a monument of national importance. During the liberation of Bulgaria, the Russo-Turkish War of 1877-78, Stara Zagora became the scene of dramatic events. Originally, the town was captured by Russian troops under the command of General Yosef Gurko. After bloody July fighting, during which Bulgarian volunteers exhibited amazing bravery, forming a corps called into being by the Tsar, the Turks failed to overcome the defenders of Stara Zagora. The volunteers fought bravely and managed to escape with the significant Samara flag, but mounted a heroic defense of the city retreat. The Turkish commander Suleiman Pasha subjected the area to relentless logging and burned Stara Zagora and thousands of innocent victims. The birth of Stara Zagora initiated the procedure for the canonization so their ancestors would become martyrs. In memory of the heroes of this dramatic epic, in 1977, the town's majestic memorial complex, the Defenders of Stara Zagora, was dedicated. Displayed in it is the Great Samara Stone Flag. There are sculptures of six volunteers and a Russian officer. They symbolize the Six Volunteer Corps, which became the basis of the established army after the liberation of the Bulgarian army. At the foot of the flag is an ossuary where the remains of the victims of the defense of Star Zagora fell. After the inferno and its terrible tragedy, Star Zagora was again rebuilt. This is the first stone laid at the launching of the rebuilding of the city on October 5, 1879 at the hands of a native of Star Zagora, the general governor of Eastern Rumelia, Alexander Bogoridi. 
In just a short time, Stara Zagora was rebuilt in the late 19th century and had about 30,000 inhabitants. The strategic location of the city will play its role in the bloody events of the early 20th century, namely the two world wars and the accompanying local conflicts. For most people, the First World War began with the assassination in Sarajevo in 1914, when Gavrilo Princip killed the Austro-Hungarian prince Franz Ferdinand. But historians know that the First World War had a dress rehearsal. The Balkan Wars of 1912 to 1913 and the subsequent Second Balkan War. The First Balkan War was declared right here in Stara Zagora on October the 5th, 1912. In the Church Blessed Virgin, Ferdinand read the Memorial Manifest. Bulgaria, Serbia, Greece and Montenegro attacked the Ottoman Empire to regain historical European territories. But a while later, a new war broke out within the European countries themselves. The path to the First World War was paved. Throughout the Balkan War, in Stara Zagora was located the headquarters of the Bulgarian army, led personally by Tsar Ferdinand. The Tsar lived in the Buchjeva house, which is preserved even today. Built in 1910 by an Austrian architect, it is a secession-style building with an ornate facade, columns, frescoes, and murals. It is one of the first houses built European-style within the city, and was originally a reception hall for guests of the local government. In 1920, it was bought by Stoyan Buchjev, a well-known industrialist, and became a private home. From him comes the name of the house. They say that in the Buchjev house, Ferdinand kept a box with a huge golden cross on which was considered to bring luck in war and had a connection back to its roots from the dome of the St. Sophia Cathedral of Constantinople. Ferdinand also decided to take the title of emperor. Fate, however, decided otherwise. After its recovery, Stara Zagora quickly began to transform into a modern European city. In 1895, the Stara Zagorian bishop Methodius Kusev created here the first European-type park in Bulgaria. Covering an area of 3,200 acres, he planted hundreds of species of exotic trees, shaped picturesque alleys, and built pavilions and recreation spots. Today, the park is officially named Bishop Methodius, but amongst its citizens, it is known as the Holy Spring, a source of healing water. At the place of the healing spring in the park, Bishop Methodius built in the late 19th century the chapel of St. Theodore Tiron. Here, in one of the most intriguing medieval legends, is where the Bulgarian ruler Boris I in the 9th century was converted to Christianity by the envoys of the Byzantine Emperor Michael III, a spiritual Baptist. The choice of Prince Boris I was strategic for civilization. It determined the fate of Bulgaria for millennia. Intertwined with the history of Star Zagora was the fate of Geo Milev, an exclusive phenomenon of Bulgarian culture of the 20th century. Geo Milev was born in 1895, close to Stara Zagora in the small town of Rodnovo, where his parents were teachers. But he grew up in the city of Linden. On the eve of the First World War, Geo Milev was recording philosophy at the University of Leipzig, and in 1914 met in London the great Belgian poet Emile Verhaen, who Geo says was his greatest teacher. In 1915, events led him to the front lines, and he returned wounded. He lost an eye, which was replaced with a porcelain ocular prosthetic. Between operations in Berlin, he became associated with creative circles and the expressionist magazines, the Action and Der Sturm, the center of the avant-garde. On his return to Bulgaria, Geo Milev became the brightest and most talented representative of Bulgarian expressionism. After the World War, the situation in Bulgaria and in Europe was complex. In Sofia, a bloody coup was carried out. The legitimate prime minister was brutally murdered. The country folk staged an uprising, inspired by leftist forces, and their uprising was violently quelled. 
Gail Milev wrote the poem September, one of the most important poems in Bulgarian poetry, by stating their civil and aesthetic positions. The spiritual rebellion became a sacrifice. In 1925, Gail Milev was sentenced and vanished without a trace, like many other Bulgarians, both before and after. In 1952, his friends, poets, became initiators to turn the house where he lived in Stara Zagora into a museum. At the end of 1953, the museum was founded, and in early 1954, the remains of the poet were found, recognized by the porcelain eye. A poet who was killed just after he had turned 30 years old. Like any large modern city, Stara Zagora has its own art gallery. It has collected the works of almost all major Bulgarian artists since the late 19th century. In its collection are Renaissance icons and classic and contemporary examples of painting. But that which makes the gallery unique is its architecture. The building, which was built throughout the 1930s in the style of an Italian Renaissance city market. Few galleries in the world can boast such an abundance of natural light in its exposition halls. This is due to the high skylight which transmits sunlight from all directions. As a result, the gallery space is always well lit and visitors can fully enjoy the exhibitions. Stara Zagora has a living witness to most of its known events. The Old Sycamore. This venerable tree is more than 700 years old. The diameter of its trunk is more than 3.5 meters. It was already 100 years old when the sedentary Bulgarian state was absorbed by the Ottoman Empire and it survived the fall of Constantinople. And then, during the Russo-Turkish era, the liberation of Bulgaria. And it will probably survive much longer. It has witnessed a great and long history, as has its hometown. Stara Zagora, the city that has passed over eight millennia.